I think there's definitely a bit of what I'd like to call inflation when it comes to your passion. And what I mean by that is a lot of people are kind of convincing themselves that they're really passionate about something because the money's there. And I think, you know, it's probably wired into our genetics for survival and reproduction to a certain extent. But, you know, it's good to be aware of it. And one big example of this are musicians and singers. You know, a lot of them, they're like, oh, I'm so passionate about music and singing. And singing is my only passion. I'm 100% for singing. It is my dream. And you'll see them crying and sobbing and fighting over each other and feeling like their whole life is destroyed if they don't win the competition in these singing competitions. But then, you know, when you realize that for most of human civilization, even if you were in like the top 1%, the top 1% of 1% of 1% of singers in the entire world, you probably weren't making that much money from it. Like arguably in certain times, maybe you were. Other times, not so much. There just wasn't a market for it sometimes. Uh, so, you know, regrettably, that's it's kind of strange how that is. And so, I mean, I feel like there's definitely a bit of convincing yourself. Is that a good or bad thing? I'll leave that up to you to decide. But it is a bit of a thing. I do think, I mean, it, obviously it doesn't hurt to try and convince yourself. Um, but it's worth noting that it's there. Now, I still also think that uh, for you know stuff as competitive as singing, um, where it's very tough to be one of the few who can make a living off of it, and the ones who make a living off of it are also very skewed to make a huge living, or at least the ones who like are really successful. I just find that it's interesting because, you know, I feel like, like a lot of other things in life, again, these are just theories, but because it's so competitive, it kind of forces certain people to just, uh, you know, figure out if this is something they really are interested in. Because it pushes out those people who are kind of like iffy about it. And I mean, what can I say? A lot of fields are very competitive. And uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons I thoroughly, thoroughly suggest and recommend um, success books. Th that's what I read a lot and I study a lot. I study a lot of successful people. That's what I talk about in my videos. And it's an incredible thing because you realize that there's certain behaviors, mindsets, practices that the most successful people have that other successful people don't have. And there's thousands of factors at play. And if you want to succeed in this world, it's best to get as much help as you can from these, uh, these pieces of advice out there, oftentimes out there for free. And so, you know, it's much better than just like being too arrogant to take any advice and just trying to face the world on your own not knowing like what should you do should you be persistent should you give up should you network how should you network how should you talk these are things i talk about in my videos and i guess the last thing i want to say is that um for success in music what i found interesting is that uh it's not all pure raw talent there's a bunch of factors at play as i've mentioned one are connections and how you get into the industry. Like it or not, you know, some of the most successful musicians as of today in pop culture, they were very well-known actors first from, you know, kids' television stations. Very prominent kids' television stations that I used to watch a lot. And these were Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. And therefore, they kind of grew their audience through their TV shows. Selena Gomez and Miley Cyrus through their Disney Channel ones. Ariana Grande through hers. And that kind of just snowballed because the kid audience loved them. And it grew such a following that, you know, if they were just decent enough singers, auto-tune and the rest would sort itself out. And then, you know, they could be trained as um, a singer 
from a professional singing coach. The demand was already there. It's also partially why a lot of the top YouTubers nowadays, they're able to sell tens of thousands of copies, sometimes hundreds of thousands of copies of their books, even if their books are about the most random of topics. And, uh, you know, there's literally like 50 books that were released this year by YouTubers and all of them have been selling like crazy. And some of them are just about like the most random of things. One's a cookbook. Another one's just like random uh, scrapbook pictures. So, you know, when you compare that to some of the other book publishers who have spent um, years, and I know some of them, not personally, but I know some of them. They've spent years studying stuff, preparing, you know, researching, doing experiments or doing research off experiments to create this whole book. And they release it to the public and no one buys a copy and they're struggling to get, uh, you know, popularity from it. It's definitely disjointed in certain ways. Does, is that to say that connections are all you need? Absolutely not. But it's one of many parts. So other than that, you know, there's other things involved. You know, what I found is that being able to be a really, really good songwriter is sometimes just as important, if not more important, than being a good singer. In fact, some of the most successful singers nowadays, Jason Derulo and Megan Trainer, they clearly made their start as a songwriter. They were songwriters by profession, and then they transitioned into being performers by performing their own songs. And, I mean, when you look at some of the most successful singers and bands of all time, they composed their own songs. You know, from the Beatles to Michael Jackson to Taylor Swift. They were all phenomenon of, you know, composing music, not just singers. And, you know, oftentimes a lot of people go in thinking, hey, if I just sing, if I'm just a great singer, it'll work. That's not always the case. There's multiple routes to success, as you can tell, you know. Is that to say that if you're not a good songwriter too, you're screwed? Not necessarily, because... You know, you have people like One Direction. They didn't write any of their own songs, really. They just auditioned for a singing competition, won, or came close to winning, and then other people wrote their song, and there's already a following there for them to write off of, similar to the other people I mentioned. So I do feel like there's a lot of factors at play. And, I mean, I guarantee you there are some people out there who have probably the best singing talent the world has ever known but for whatever reason they're not you know making millions singing maybe they're struggling to get by you know there's a lot of things at play uh, perseverance persistence actually wanting it and going for it you know some people just sit there on their butts maybe every week or month or year they might do one thing like I'll do one audition or something and then there's others who are sitting there hustling every single week or day to get a connection and then, I mean, then, then there comes in street smarts. Street smarts is another huge thing. Like uh, some of the most successful musicians, they know how to talk to people. They have people skills. And they know you can't just be going in there, taking value, being a value leech all the time. In order to get connections and network, you have to bring value to the table uh, by flattery, by, you know, you know, talking to them by you know, providing some sort of form of value. Maybe you don't have any money, but in other forms, maybe it's um, doing favors for that person. No, I'm not talking sexual favors or any form of illegal favors. I'm talking stuff like, um, you know, hustling really hard, being that intern that's working there 60 hours a week for no pay because you're passionate about something. And, you know, because the, the guy you're working for is your role model and is actually a good person and understands it, he sees your work or she sees your work one day and says, hey, I'm going to promote this guy. So that's, you know, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. Uh, there's all sorts of things at play. You know, you have to realize, okay, maybe I got to move employers because this guy can't see my talent. And he's a complete dick to everyone. And then it comes into play, well, am, am I being biased in my talent and my skill? And I'm being too arrogant in what I'm capable of? Or am I actually like this? So long story short, thus ends my rant. 
this video is probably not going to get a ton of views because um, it's, it's just a long form rant. However, uh, there it is. Perhaps it will provide you some insight. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video.